Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Tuesday. Welcome to another episode of Shenanigans. We're in the 80s. We're in the episode number 80s. So we're getting pretty close to 100 episodes of Shenanigans, which is pretty awesome. I am currently on my way to swim to go get a little swim workout in because after my triathlon this past weekend, I realized how much I miss swimming and this is the time of year where I most enjoy it because it's hot out and it feels good to get in the water. So I figured, you know, I should start getting up on Tuesdays and Thursdays and going to swim. So here I am, that's what I'm doing now and we're gonna have a great time. And then later today, I gotta go to the gym so it'll be a little double workout day. I'm also gonna do a photo shoot at the gym at noon and, uh, and then I gotta work at the brewery so, good busy day, and we're gonna document as much of it as possible. But for now, swim time. pretty good for not having really swam in a very long time and then doing the race on Saturday or Sunday and then being out here. But pretty good. I miss swimming. It was the perfect temperature for swimming. swim I recorded a little like hey swimmer really well and I really miss swimming video on the GoPro and I totally didn't notice that there was a big water droplet right in the middle of the uh, screen and it like totally distorted my face and it looked funny and so I uh, here here's a clip from that all done with swim that was so fun so yeah that's pretty ridiculous but now I'm on my way to CrossFit to take some more pictures over there and then get a workout in myself I just uploaded Saturday's vlog, so that's pretty fun. If you haven't seen that, hopefully you can uh, go back and watch that one. I think it's episode 83 of Shenanigans. So this one's episode 85, and we're only 15 away from big 100 episodes. It's pretty awesome. So that all being said, I'm gonna go to CrossFit. I still feel weird saying that because I, I was I used to be I used to not be a big advocate. I used to not be an advocate at all of CrossFit, and uh, and now I'm really enjoying it. So it's weird, it's still weird. But I will uh, hopefully I can get some time with the owner, the head coach. His name's Michael. He's a super cool guy, and maybe ask him some questions and give you guys a bigger idea of why CrossFit is is different now than it used to be. So we'll see how that goes. See if he's down. What's up coach? I'm doing my vlog today. Yeah. I was I was just telling these lovely people that I didn't used to be a uh, advocate of CrossFit because going through college 
a lot of the professors talked a lot of shit about CrossFit. Of course, I had it out with two of my professors. Yeah, and so my question to you is like, what what's changed about CrossFit since it first started, and like, what's your approach to make it like not fall into like the stereotype? Uh, just as the consumer becomes more educated about what exercise prescription they subscribe to, uh, the quality of coaching and the uh, the process to become a coach within a given facility has improved immensely, I, w I would say, as I travel, drop into bo from box to box to box, you're starting to see more uh, strength and conditioning professionals that also coach CrossFit or CrossFit coaches that pursue further education in strength and conditioning to be better practitioners of the craft. So, you know, as the con as consumer becomes more and more educated, forcing us as coaches to also level up and, and pursue, you know, being legitimate experts in our field yeah. to give you guys a better quality experience. Would you say that when CrossFit kind of first started, it was a lot of like kind of irresponsible coaching and like there was less of a focus on technique and yeah, things I mean, like I'm, that? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to make a blanket statement and say there was irresponsible coaching, sure. but there was definitely a, a lack of... Fundamentals were overlooked for intensity, yeah. I would say, is probably the more accurate statement. You know, I was active duty in the Marine Corps as CrossFit was, you know, rising exponentially. I just watched a lot of my Marines doing CrossFit workouts, quote, air quotes. And when I would ask them, what, you know, what are you doing? They're like, oh, we, you know, we're just following this, this YouTube thing. And it's like, that's, that's not good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I even had a bad taste in my mouth about sure. CrossFit for the longest time. Then when I got my L1 and saw what CrossFit was supposed to be, sure, it made sense. Yeah. You know, and as time goes on, like I was saying, more and more people have a vested interest in the education of fitness above and beyond simply CrossFit. Yeah. That the, the quality of coaching and the the coach's eye, if you will, has just become that much better. What would you say to somebody who has never tried it? And you know, give it a shot. It? You know, uh, shop around. You know, uh, not all boxes are created equal. Part of our process, all of our coaches go through a six to nine month apprenticeship program before they even count reps. Yeah. You know, before they start a warm up. Not everybody does that. You know, above and beyond the the technical expertise, you got to have the the people aspect is crucial. Sure. Right? So you want to you look for kind of like three things. The coaching, number one. The, the community, make sure that you're surrounded by your people. That makes the experience that much better. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, is there, is there, rhyme, to, is there a rhyme to the reason? Yeah. You know, does, does the, the programming make sense for you? Yeah. You know, some gyms are very gymnastics heavy in their programming. Some believe in uh, uh, conventional macro and mesocycles. cycles. Uh, others are very just very strength bias and then others are, are more competitive in the way they program others are and from the uh, competition standpoint uh, and then others are more general population generalized fitness so you got to make sure that you know you, you look at those three things their process their coaching and their community to make sure that all of those things line up with what your goals are cool so. there you have it that's why I'm doing it now you up thanks coach That was a fun, very challenging workout. It was like 30 minutes of just redlining it, and uh, it was pretty tough, but had a great time. Now I'm out taking the monster for another bathroom potty break. He's doing great, and uh, yeah. So I want to start a new thing for these 14 days. Uh, it, it will, we're already on day three here, but the 14 day vlog marathon, we're gonna do a daily, Johan's daily tips for happiness. Not to say that I'm an expert in being positive and happy all the time, but 
figured I'd give a little daily tip on uh, something I was I'm thinking about in terms of you know something to keep you feeling good. So the first tip that I'm gonna give, and this is something that I don't do very well often, and that is live in the moment. And that's something that this guy teaches me. You know, as people, we think a lot about the future, we think a lot about the past, we think a lot about uh, things that have happened to us, or we get nervous about the future, uh, if it's not clear, things like that. These are things that I struggle with. And uh, when you look at a dog, like this guy, they just live now and they're happy just being with you and just doing their thing. And I think if as people we lived more in the present and didn't focus so much on the future or the past, we would probably be a little happier. Don't you think, buddy? I think so.